Hello friends, welcome back, hearty welcome to you. In this session, as part of pair of guidelines, let's look at this theorem which says that if A, B and H are not all zero, then the equation, second degree homogeneous equation, A x square plus 2 H x square plus B y square equal to zero, represents a pair of straight lines if and only if H square is greater than or equal to A B. Let's try to understand this, for that we'll just write it down. Second degree homogeneous equation is given by A x square plus 2 H x y plus B y square is equal to zero. Now, this represents a pair of straight lines which we understood earlier. If and only if H square, if and only if means double side arrow, H square is greater than or equal to A B. Now, First, let's take the first case where we have a pair of straight line and we will see that is h square greater than or equal to a b. In the second case, we will take h square greater than or equal to a b and we will see that how we can write them into two pair of, pair of straight lines. So first, let us say a x square plus 2 h x y plus b y square equal to 0. Now, we said that we can write it as a pair of straight lines. So let us say those straight lines are given by L1 x plus m1 y plus n1 multiply with l2 x plus m2 y plus n2 is equal to 0. That means a x square plus 2 h x y plus b y square is a pair of straight lines. That means it represents two independent straight lines. One is l1 x plus m1 y plus n1 equal to 0. Another one is l2 x plus m2 y plus n2 equal to 0. Now let's try to multiply and verify the quotients and compare the quotients of first and second. This is my first equation. This is my second equation. We multiply them. What we will have? A x square, quotient of x square I will compare first. Quotient of x square tells me that from the equation 1 it is A. From the equation 2 it is nothing but L1, L2. Similarly, quotient of y square, if I do, I will get b is equal to m1, m2. Then next we will go for quotient of xy. When I compare, I will see from the first equation 2hxy. So 2h and here I have l1 into m2 that is giving me xy term and another one is l2 into m1. So, can I write down L1 M2 plus L2 M1, L1 M2 plus L2 M1 and we can also, we can also do quotient of X. If I do quotient of X, I know on the first side it is 0. When I compare here for X, I get L1 N2 plus L2 N1, L1 N2 plus L2 N1. Similarly, if I compare quotient of Y, I have M1 into M2 plus M2 into N1, M1 into N2 plus M2 into N1. If I compare the quotient of constant term, now what's the constant term we have in the first one? Nothing, 0. But in the second, I have the constant term N1 into N2. So, n1, n2 is equal to 0. These are all the inputs, whatever we have. From this, we will try to find out what is h square minus ab value and we will prove that that is h square is greater than or equal to ab. So, that is the first part of the proof. So, let us go ahead with that. Now, if we simplify this, this is nothing but equal to l1 m2 minus l2 m1 by 2 whole square which is obviously greater than or equal to 0 because square of where L1, M1, L2, M2 are not equal to 0 obviously the square of non-zero number will be greater than or equal to 0 or it is positive. So that is the one, one side of the proof. What we have done? We have been given that A x square plus 2 h x y plus B y square equal to 0 represents a pair of straight lines. Then we have to prove that h square should be greater than or equal to a b. So what we did, we have written 
a x square plus 2 h x y plus b y square as l1 x plus m1 y plus n1 into l2 x plus m2 y plus n2. And we found out what is the values of h and a b. We substitute them. Also, we can understand from here these three equations that n1 equal to 0 and also n2 equal to 0. How we can find out that? We know that n1 and 2 equal to 0. That means either n1 is 0 or n2 is 0. Let us say n1 is 0. From this condition, we get n2 equal to 0. So both of them are 0. So in this case, we represent ax square plus 2hx square plus by square as l1x plus m1y into l2x plus m2y is equal to 0. The quotient term will not be there. Now let's go to the other side of the proof where we have been given h square is greater than or equal to a b. We have to represent a x square plus 2 h x square plus b y square as a pair of straight lines. Now we have been given we have been given that h square is greater than or equal to a b. We have to represent a x square plus 2 h x y plus b y square as a pair of straight lines equal to 0 as a pair of straight lines. So what we will do now, we will take that equation and divide it by a. The point is very simple. We want to get there a square x square so that I can write it as a x whole square. So it will become 1 by a into a square x square plus 2 h a x y plus a b y square is equal to 0. Now, now let's we are considering the scenario where a is not equal to 0. We will take at second case a equal to 0. Case 1, a not equal to 0. Now, since a is not equal to 0, now can I write down this is ax whole square plus 2 into h a x y plus a b y square equal to 0. Now we will use completing the squares method and we will write down a x square is my a square 2 a b 2 into a x into my b is h y. So I will be adding I will be adding b square which is nothing but h y whole square plus a b y square minus h y whole square is equal to 0. Now what is this nothing but? Now we know that this whole thing is a x plus h y whole square. So can I write it as next step as this part is a x plus h y whole square. Then can I write the next part is minus of h square minus a b into y square. Let's simplify that. We have h y whole square is h square y square minus of a b minus h square is minus of h square minus a b into y square. Now this is in the form of a square minus b square equal to 0. So can I write it as a plus b into a minus b. So the next step will be we'll write down this as a x plus h y plus root of h square minus a b into y is equal to 0 or a x plus h y minus of root of h square minus a b into y equal to 0. Now we simplify this we will get a x plus h plus root of h square minus a b into y equal to 0 or a x plus h minus of root of h square minus a b into y equal to 0. Now you can see that we have written a x square plus 2 h x square plus b y square as as combined as two two equations separately one is ax plus 
h plus root of h square minus a b into y and the another one is a x plus h plus a x plus h minus root of h square minus a b into y. Now what I can do actually I, I don't need to put r here because we are not we are going to multiply this. I can simply leave this as this into this equal to 0. Similarly here this into this equal to 0. Now what is the condition given to us given to us that h square is greater than or equal to a b. Now according to that so we have represented a x square plus 2 h x square plus b y square as 1 by a into a x plus h plus root of h square minus a b into y multiply that with a x plus h minus of root of h square minus a b into y. Now, we already know h square is greater than or equal to a b. So, what we know from this, what we can understand from this, that if h square equal to greater than or equal to a b, then a x square plus 2 h x y plus b y square equal to 0 represent represent a pair of straight lines. That's the first condition. Suppose h square equal to a b. What will happen if h square equal to a b? It represents a pair of straight lines in the first case. which are equal, so can we write them as coincident? We have coincident pair of straight lines. If when h square is equal to a b, when h square greater than or equal to a b, we represent two different lines. In the first scenario, we represent two distinct lines or two different lines. In the second scenario, this represents two coincident lines. And if h square is less than a b, then we have two imaginary lines. So what we understood from this that if I have been given an equation, second degree homogeneous equation of the form a x square plus 2 h x square plus b y square equal to 0, then it represents a pair of straight lines only if h square is greater than or equal to a b. Let us try to do one simple example before we wrap this up. So we have been given these three pair of straight lines. We have been given these three not pair of straight lines. We have been given these three second degree homogeneous equations. We have to tell whether they represent pair of straight lines or not. We know very simple. We know our logic is h square equal to greater than or equal to a b. It should be. If it is less than a b, then they are imaginary. Equal to a b, then they are coincident. Greater than a b, then they are e different or unique lines. So let us first find out what is a, what is a here, 6 what is 2h minus 5 by 2 and what is b 1? What is h square minus a b? h square minus a b is 25 by 4 minus 6 that is equal to 1 by 4 which is greater than 0. So, this represents a pair of distinct lines. It represents a pair of distinct lines. Now let us go to the next part. 3x square minus xy plus 2y square. Here a is 3. We are comparing with, let me write down what we are comparing. ax square plus 2hxy plus by square equal to 0. Now in this case, a equal to 3, 2h equal to minus 1 and b is equal to 2. 
Now, what is h square? h square is 1 by 4 minus AB. AB 3 into 2. That is 1 by 4 minus 6. So, we see that h square minus AB is less than 0. So, these are imaginary lines. Let's go to the last one. We have a equal to 9 here, 2h equal to 12, that means h equal to 6, and we have b equal to 4. What is h square minus ab? That is nothing but 6 square minus 4 into 9, which is 36 minus 36, which is equal to 0. So h square equal to ab in this scenario, so this represent two coincident lines coincident lines so this is tick mark coincident lines these are distinct lines but these are imaginary lines so that's about how we can say that by having a look at a second degree homogeneous equation can i say that is it a combined equation of two straight lines yes or no for that the condition is very simple is h square greater than or equal to a b in the second degree homogeneous equation a x square plus b h x square plus b y square equal to 0 in the coming session we will see how to find out the angle between the pair of lines so suppose and also maybe we will also go through how to rep how we can represent second degree not homogeneous equation non-homogeneous equation in a pair of straight lines what is the condition let's see if that needed we will do that or we will try to find out angle between the pair of straight lines in the coming session so thanks for your time and support i'll catch you once again till then keep smiling and sharing bye for now